do um, have a sort of issue, issue borough, a um, sort of issue plan, or a long no. issue plan? No, although obviously Yama would have been a major part of uh, bad guys. That Yama was actually a late addition. I knew I wanted Dingo and Matrix and Fang in the show, and I actually created a new character to, to take the hunter role, and then all of a sudden I was like, geez, I got this girl in uh, Hunter's Moon. I should use her. <laughs> and that made a hell of a lot more sense. In fact, it made so much sense, it was sort of like, uh, obviously that's what it was supposed to be. And then at some point, we realized that um, we were maybe working a little too hard to take it outside the Gargoyles universe. I mean, we were trying to sell it as a Gargoyle spin-off and putting a Gargoyle into the show. And again, it was one of these things where Yama made so much sense. And I love the, I mean, you can barely see it here, but I love the relationship between Yama and Fang. These are two guys, we're gonna hate each other's guts when the show begins, and we'll always pretend to hate each other's guts for as long as they live. It's sort of like Cork and Odo. <laughs> basic idea that they would want, I'll, I'll get to it, I promise. Um, uh, it was, the basic idea was that Yama would be in there, and the idea was that, as we've mentioned before in the series, traditionally when a gargoyle commits a crime, he's banished from the clan. And so Yama, after what happened in Bushido, the episode Bushido, was banished from Ishimura for a period of time until he could regain his honor. So Yama is then coerced into joining the bad guys, as all of them were. Um, you know, it's, it's this or jail, basically. Um, with the exception of Matrix, who goes along for the ride, more or less. Um, and of course, Yama, too, because, well, they never Well, you know, he makes a great science experiment. Uh, <laughs> so, and you know, at the time, with the revelation that there are gargoyles in Manhattan, Gargoyles are sort of wanted creatures, so, but we would have played in a lot of Japanese stuff into their story in particular, which Yama's main would have been an important subplot for the series, yeah. Uh, you did mention uh, the, the headman who's supposed to be sort of like um, the sort of evil Charlie's Angels here. And the director? Like Charlie, but then you had, I think one time, you No, not to Xanatos, to Duval. Huh? Not to Xanatos. I mean, some of you don't, probably don't know who Duval is, but Duval is the leader of the Illuminati. Oh. And the director, who was voiced by, uh, oh, I'm looking at his name. What? Terminator Lynch Jr.? No. Uh, the director is, uh, it's like Kennedy. What? So, so it's a No, no, the, this was a government, uh, you know, an international government organization, but the director's uh, was a, a very sort of ends justify the means kind of guy. So he didn't, you know, his attitude was these guys are bad guys. If they wind up getting killed, eh, you know, so he, he wind, you know, he's sort of a, a mixed force for good. Um, I didn't hear you. Yes, very much so. I mean, that was definitely our inspiration, was Dirty Dust. Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking about this. Do you have any other, well, bad guys plan for bad guys? You mentioned the terrorists once. Yeah, I, um, I had a, a major, I don't know if I want to give it away. You know, I had a major thing planned with another set of, of uh, villains. Also, in the pilot, um, Severius was going to be in it with a big, nefarious plan where he was actually using Fang. Severus and Fang team up. And the, the way the pilot story was structured is it opens in Australia, in Sydney, with Dingo and Matrix doing something really heroic, saving a bunch of people's lives. Everyone in Australia thinks Dingo is terrific and they love him. And then that night, Hunter takes Despite Matrix's help, Hunter shows up and takes Dingo down, and she threatens to drag him back to 
the U.S. where he's still a wanted escaped felon, um, and she offers him a choice. And the choice is join her team or not. At the time, only Hunter knows that the director exists, and what no one knows at the time also is that Hunter um, is in fact also under the same circumstance. You know, after the events of Hunter's Moon, she was in big trouble too, and uh, the director basically said, you lead this team or spend the rest of your life in jail. Um, and so she's also under the same kind of pressures. Um, but Dingo doesn't realize that at first. Dingo agrees to join up. Um, Matrix agrees to come along for the ride. They then go to Japan where they recruit, quotes, Yama. And then they go on their first mission, which is to defeat this nefarious plan of Fang and Savarius's. They succeed in doing that. Fang nearly kills all of them. And then, to everyone's shock, Hunter turns around and offers the same deal to Fang. So they all hate Fang's guts. But now he's part of the team, even though he was the big villain in the first episode, um, or the pilot, anyway. And that was going to be sort of how the series got started. Obviously, we were going to have a sort of, you know, Sam Diane thing going on with uh, Hunter and Dingo, and uh, you know, a lot of other stuff. Uh, John Castaway would have wound up playing some villainous function in this thing because, you know, obviously his sister's leading this team and he's leading the quarantine, so that would have had some role in there. One of the missions they would have gotten sent on by the director would have been to take down the gargoyles, and they would have succeeded. Um, but it wouldn't have worked out that way. And then at some point, we were going to do something where, um, something really, I, and I hadn't even worked this out, but something really, really bad is going to happen, and Matrix saves the day by doing something just incredible. And, but so impressive that it scares the powers that be. Not because he was doing something bad, but just because if he's got that kind of power, he potentially could be a threat. So they're ordered to take down Matrix, which splits the team. And uh, you know, we, we had a lot of great stories planned. Gary Sperling and I developed Bad Guys together. Gary Sperling was one of the story editors on Gargoyles. A lot of the post Gargoyles development was done with Gary Sperling and myself. So, um, and he worked on that. He wrote the script for that uh, Like a Real that you saw. Um, 